Welcome. My name is Hubert Savanea and I'm a hydrologist. In this module, we'll discuss the runoff generating mechanisms. Maybe the most predictable part of a hydrograph is the recession curve, which represents the slow groundwater depletion during the base flow of a river. The recession flow obeys the water balance of the renewable deep blue groundwater. In the dry season, the deep blue groundwater has no recharge, and in the river there is no surface runoff. So the catchment discharge consists of groundwater, and the active storage is the groundwater storage. It is the water balance of the dark blue box. This results in a very simple water balance for dry weather. On top of that, we may assume that the groundwater discharge is directly proportional to the storage. The proportionality co coefficient k represents the average residence time of the water in the groundwater reservoir. Mathematically, it can be easily shown that the solution of these two equations is an exponential function. Please see the example and do it yourself. One can easily recognize the residence time k from the graph, because, because it is the time where the tangent to the curve hits the time axis. Here you see this illustrated. The exponential function has special properties. The time derivative of q equals minus q over k. And the integral of q, being the remaining groundwater storage, is k times q. Check it yourself. Now let's discuss the flood generating mechanisms. When we want to determine the runoff as a result of a large precipitation event, we only should consider that part of the rain which contributed to the runoff the so-called effective precipitation PA. We thus have to subtract that part of the precipitation that replenishes the soil moisture or that fills stagnant pools, later to be evaporated. The evaporation itself during a large precipitation event we may neglect. So how do we subtract the increase of temporary storage from the precipitation? There are different methods. Some subtract a certain percentage. Some subtract a fixed threshold. Some distinguish between a short-term buffer, for instance pool formation, and a longer-term threshold, like soil moisture storage. And others assume a sort of maximum infiltration capacity. We generally take the fixed threshold for its simplicity. We saw that groundwater depletion can be simulated as a linear reservoir. If groundwater is dominated in a catchment, sorry, if groundwater is dominant in a catchment, we could simulate both the fill and the depletion by a linear reservoir. We call that the storage principle. The solution is an exponential function with a fixed time scale k. For every time increment, we can apply this principle, whereby the runoff tends exponentially to the effective precipitation Pa, starting from the discharge in the previous time step. We can do this analytically, but also numerically. The numerical approach can be easily done in a spreadsheet. Please look at the example. The numerical solution is that the discharge Q2 at the next time step is a function of the effective precipitation and the discharge in the previous time step. The coefficients depend on both the time scale and the time step. It is easy to see that the sum of the two coefficients equals 1. Why is that? Here is what the results look like for different values of the residence time k. 
If a catchment is not groundwater dominated, but rather dominated by fast runoff, for instance, a paved area or uh, a relatively impervious area or a hill slope with underlying impervious hard rock, then the runtime principle can be very useful. This approach is also called the rational method, whereby the runoff is proportional to the surface area contributing to the runoff. This area increases over time as an ever larger area of the catchment contributes to the runoff, depending on the time needed for the water to reach the outfall. Imagine you are in an amphitheater and ping pong balls come falling from the sky at a continuous rate. The balls that fall closest to the stage discharge first. Only when the balls from the highest seats in the amphitheater have reached the stage is the discharge equal to the flux coming from the sky. This is how it looks. The top graph shows the precipitation rate, the middle one the contributing area, and the lower one the discharge. At the end, the discharge equals the precipitation rate. Of course, this is only correct under a range of limiting assumptions. But in relatively small catchments, in urban or impervious areas, it may work very well. Mathematically, it can be described by a simple threshold function, described by the min operator. And the interesting part is that the runoff can be described purely as a function of only the effective precipitation and the so-called time of concentration. The time it takes for the most remote part of the catchment to contribute to the discharge. If you have subsequent precipitation events of fixed time steps, then we can also transfer the solution into a numerical scheme, which can be readily incorporated in a spreadsheet. Here you see outputs of the spreadsheet for the same effective precipitation event, but with different times of concentration. Here are some questions for you to reflect on. The storage principle and the runtime principle are primarily educational tools, although engineers may use them for practical circumstances as long as they realize the limitations but the real catchments are more complex. Scientific hydrologists still don't exactly know how water moves through the terrestrial system. I plan to make a follow-up course in hydrological modeling to help you further explore runoff generating processes. There still is a world to discover in hydrology. <laughs>